That is so fetch. Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Kaya and today we are going to be checking out the extreme metal band Agalock. Oh, I'm very excited. This band didn't, but did win our poll because I chose the winner, okay? I know this poll was a twist, okay? But these boys are from Portland, Oregon, and if you don't know, I lived in Portland for like 10 years as I was growing up, and uh, I wanted to represent my boys. So, here we are with Agalock. <laughs> we have five songs from three different albums. All these songs were chosen by y'all, so uh, I'm very excited about today's picks. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please feel free to do so. Uh, join our metal journey. We're, we're always recruiting, we're always looking for people, and there's a lot of exciting things happening, so join. Also, don't forget to join our Discord, The Mosh Pit. There's an invite link down below. You can click that. And, um, yeah, send me stuff if you want something to be featured in the metal unboxing, like we've got stuff here and um, here and also here. <laughs> y'all are amazing. I have so many packages from y'all, so do not fret. They will be featured in the next metal unboxing video. So if you want to send something to be featured, again, P.O. Box in the description. Uh, like and share the video with a friend and let me know stuff about Agalark. What's your favorite record? Least favorite record? Have you seen them live? Um, yeah, and what do you think about these songs? So without further ado, let's get into Agalock. So the first song we are going to listen to is called In the Shadow of Our Pale Companion and is from the 2002 record The Mantle. early but I'm just preparing for tears okay already we've got cello we've got I don't know acoustic guitar some other folk instrument I feel an emotional I feel like I'm gonna cry I'm getting opeth vibes okay we're not even a minute in and I already feel like I'm gonna cry let's go remastered version. I'm so glad I picked this version because this is this it needed it. Okay. So glad that they remastered this. 
Oh man. And the oh the acoustic guitar is panned so beautifully. And his strums are just so simple. Da -da -dun, da -da -dun, da -da. And it's just it's just very simple, almost kind of like lackadaisical. It's just there mostly just for the tone and just for that like pure rhythm sound of the of the acoustic guitar. And both of these like melodies are just they complement each other so well. Just the 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 main part, da -da -na 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 -na, whatever that main sort of riff that's going through, and this like. I'm assuming it's a guitar. It sounds a little more like folky though. And the accents he's doing -na 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 -na, and the higher octave that he was doing layered beautifully. Super like just catchy. There's vibes. There's vibes. <laughs> these vocals real quick okay beautiful and the the these sort of like holding notes that he's doing and the harmonies that he's doing they're beautifully layered and the cello just like matches the note brings it all together mm. his voice too his like cleans like some of the like cleans that he was doing sort of in the middle of that chorus vocally reminded me of um Oh God! What is that song? Oh, is it by Oasis? It's that one song that everybody loves but hates also at the same time. If I remember it, I'm gonna put it down here because <laughs> that's what it sounded like. Um, oh my gosh! This is beautiful. It's just so gorgeous. Okay, okay. Let's go. Hit me with the solo. <laughs>
six minutes in and I feel like I'm gonna fall my eyes out. Dude, this is like a, this is a slow burn, but it's a good slow burn. This is like sad girl, but like emo boy, but also like burn the midnight oil. You could make love to this song, like, <sighs> oh. I think this might be more beautiful than Opeth. I said it. I said it. It might be more beautiful than what we heard on Blackwater Park already. But I don't know. I'm feeling very emotional. <sighs> okay. Let's go. sound beautiful dark I walk down here to the river and then it kind of comes down and that's like little I don't know it's like guitar thing that he's doing da, 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 da. it's kind of like holding it out to where it sounds like it's like almost clipping I don't know but they're panning it they were panning it just before this section mm. I'm overwhelmed. And the picking. Oh, the picking. Oh, they layered it perfectly just on the top of your headphones here. Oh my god. Agalog, I was not prepared. I didn't wear waterproof mascara, okay? Okay, okay. Let's go.
I'm amazed by this song. This whole song is a total experience, dude. I mean, they just spent such a beautiful amount of time crafting the headphone experience. And it's, I'm in my field. I'm emotional. I'm feeling just like this is the most beautiful song and I needed this. It's been kind of a stressful few days, okay? Just being honest. And this is this is giving me an outlet and I'm feeling it I feel like I'm gonna cry I'm just gonna yawn it out I'm just gonna yawn it out it's gonna be fine Ugh, okay we've got like two more minutes sort of like it's not a thunder sound but it sounds like a thunder sound and I love how they accented those last few like little melodies with the acoustic guitar so it was like obviously the electric guitar tone and then they actually recorded the acoustic guitar just giving it those little accents <sighs> I've already proven that this was an experience y'all already know that this was an experience I honestly have no idea what just happened in the shadow of a pale companion. Not from the Great Expectations. We are talking about Agaloc. In the shadow of our pair of our pale companion. I wouldn't expect anything less from boys coming out of Portland because if you have been to if you've been to Oregon, like the nature, the nature around in Oregon is just out of this world. Okay, Discord. Sorry, buddy. In the shadow of our pale companion is an exploration of existential concerns that builds on rhythmic nylon and acoustic guitars and draws inspiration from John and Anderson's favorite musicians and filmmakers. Don Anderson unfolds the theme behind the song in an entry to Decibel's Hall of Fame feature on the mantle. Man's relation to God or the lack of God. Nature and the overall feeling that life is meaningless and that hope is a futile project in light of our insignificance in the cosmos. In an interview with NPR, Don considers Olver's masterpiece album Bergtat, Sergio Leon's films, 
and Godspeed You, Black Emperor's guitar work as notable inspirations for this song. I don't know what any of those things are, but I feel like I need to check them out now. The Mantle. 2002, huh? Where'd they record this? Ugh. No info on where you recorded it? Simply beautiful. Yeah. Literally the most beautiful song I've heard in a very long time. Through vast valleys I wandered to the highest peaks on pathways through a wild forgotten landscape in search of God in spite of man till the lost forsaken endless. This is where I choose to tread, fall, so shall we fall into the Nihil. This is not approved, but Nihil translates to nothing in Latin. The nothingness that we feel in the arms. Oh, that's kind of a really cool way to rhyme that. Fall, so shall we fall into the nothing, into nothingness. But instead of saying nothingness, because he probably already had this line written, he was like, I want to say Nihil, because it, it rhymes with feel. Clever songwriting. The nothingness that we feel in the arms of the pale, in the shadow of the grim companion who walks with us. Here is the landscape, where is the god? Here is the sun, has he fallen? Here in the balance of the earth, and abandon us. This is the callback. Where is the God? Has he fallen and abandon us? As I'm stalked by the shadow of death's hand, the fire in my heart is forged across to the land. Here I gaze at a pantheon of oak, a citadel of stone. If this grand panorama before me is what you call God, then God is not dead. Hom is describing his pantheistic views. Pantheism is a belief that there is no distinct personal God, but rather every phenomenon around us compose an imminent God. John is disputing Nietzsche's famous God is dead statement by defining God as the natural elements around him. The white EP includes an instrumental song called Pantheist, which gives more credibility to this reference. The white EP, huh? I'm sold. I'm here for it, honestly. Beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. Now that we have finished that song, we're going to continue listening to two more songs out of the mantle. The next one is going to be You Were But A Ghost In My Arms. <laughs>
double bass through this section is so perfect. I almost want it to be a little bit more, but it's giving me everything that I want. It's just filling so much space, but it's not like overtaking the, the whole song and being too overbearing. Even though I want more of it, it's really nice. Also, I love the vocals. I think it's Oasis. You all would know the freaking song. Oh, it's that one song everybody knows the words to but hates listening to. There's a lot of those songs, but his vocals remind me of that. I digress. Anyway, really, really love the play on the whispers. The placement of the whispers is divine, and they're panned in really nice, delicious spots to where they just are like the perfect accent to these like kind of lower harmonious sort of tones that they're doing. Um, this one is, as I wouldn't say it's dragging a little bit, but it's more of like, it's kind of sticking to the same sort of thing. Whereas the first one we listened to, I felt was more of a experience sound wise with a little bit more moving parts. This one seems like it's a little bit more like, stagnant so far not that it's bad but that's just kind of what's been happening also the double bass flirtation in the beginning was a nice element too <laughs> too but hates to sing anyway <laughs> god my brain uh... I'm just keeping it real. It's not connecting with me as much as the first song because I feel like it's just kind of monotonous. But I'm noticing the little things that they're doing. Um, I just really like the vocals. But I wish that there was like some sort of change. I'm hoping that there is more of a change. One thing I really liked about the first song is they had just so many different moving parts and like elements that were so beautiful. And then they also had this like sort of marching band type drumming that they were doing, marching style drumming, um, which was a really nice element. So I'm hoping that they they switch it up in a, a little bit. <laughs> I 
like this. music but like not in a bad way you know it's just so like calming and relaxing and just something again that I could vibe to I feel like I'm just gonna need to listen to this song more because I could see myself vibing to it and I feel relaxed listening to it um but it's just it's not grabbing me as much as the first song um but I could definitely see myself putting this on and like working and doing something else, um, cleaning even, I don't know. That's what I got. Um, also I really like the drums. I liked that how he built it up back into that sort of double bass layered section that we were talking about earlier. He kind of like did these like bum 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 bum, bum 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 bum, and then he was kind of just holding down the fort and then going flirting a little bit with the double bass and then he goes full on into that double bass section really nice layer and I thought that was Coda. Oh, it's so like w interesting placement in my headphone pan. It's like right here and it's buried underneath like the guitar and like the drums and bass. So it's, it's really coming out like super, super thin to where you can kind of hear it and it's almost kind of like creepy and he like it's almost like they faded it in there so you didn't really hear like the first impact it just uh, it just appeared honestly <laughs>
feel like this band is an experience live. I'm not sure what they would do with this song live or other than just like vibe or do they do like props and stuff like that. Um, I would assume it's just kind of like a vibe. Um, oh man. Bubba. <sighs> I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> you were but a ghost by Agaloc. I need water. Track six on the mantle. Are there any credits? This is not approved, but it says, You were but a ghost to my arms talks of a man who has lost his girlfriend. As the title track suggests, she died in the protagonist's arms, and now that she's no longer alive, his lover is about to go crazy. And like many other Agalox songs, and this one, an accordion is used. There's an accordion in this? I didn't hear that. I don't think that's right, Bubba. Because accordions are a pretty distinct sounding instrument. But let me know your thoughts. <sighs> you can cut out me drinking water crap. <laughs> yeah, I don't think an accordion was used. But I don't know. Like snowfall, you cry a silent storm. Your tears paint rivers on this oaken wall. Amber, nectar, misery, ichor? Cascading in strains of hollowed form. For each stain, a forsaken shadow. You are the lug... Baba. Lugubrious spirit. Etched in the oak. I have no idea what that means. Etched in the oak of wonder. You are the sullen voice and silent storm. Each night I lay awakened by her shivering silent voice from the shapes in the corridor walls. It pierces the solitude like that of a distant scream in the pitch black forest of my delusion. With each passing day, a deeper grave. Why did you leave me to die? Why did you abandon me? Why did you walk away and leave me bitterly yearning? Dang, girl. Sad. All right. I mean, I'm here for it. Oh. Sorry, it's late at night. And I'm filming this for y'all because I love you so much. Okay. We had we ate fried chicken for lunch. And we had a big old thing of coffee ice cream. So that was our cheat day today. But we're gonna be good girls tomorrow. Okay. So we're gonna listen to our last song off of the mantle. It is before this ghost song, but you know, it's called I Am the Wooden Door. This intro guitar part's interesting. They're like playing this like it's like this different pitch almost tucked in right here between the bass, the bass and the drums, and then you have the other like electric guitar just holding the fort here. It's quite an interesting mix. This whole I'm listening to all the remastered stuff, which is quite an experience <laughs> in this. <laughs> I like it though.
vocal comes in at the same time that the cello comes in. Just this beautiful melody. And then we're hearing that folk instrument that was in the first song. We're hearing it start, like, come in just a couple measures after the cello, just accenting those things. But, oh, right now you can barely hear it. She's panned all the way here. Oh, that sounds so pretty. It's got to be a guitar, right? Oh, they said they were playing a guitar with nylon strings. Those are the ones that... Yeah, it's not the, the metal nickel strings. Look, okay, I play guitar. I know these things. Nylon's like the plastic one. Plastic looking strings, right? I can't play those guitars. I have to have, like, the nickel strings. But do you ever, like, get... Okay, this side rant. Side, side note. Do you ever, like, guitar players have your calluses, like, just shed randomly? And you're like, oh, God, my skin's, like, falling apart. You're trying to impress the ladies and your fingers are falling apart. <laughs> melody and they kind of go and like have a nice resolve and then at that resolve is when they bring in more of this like folkier guitar sound also they changed the way the pan was after they introduced it in that one section then they brought it back here so it's almost like they had sort of the like higher octave straight hitting you here and the lower octave still maintaining their original position here. Beautiful placement. <laughs>
feel like. Oh my god. That little like acoustic guitar instrumental section. I love, y'all know I love acoustic guitar, but one thing that makes it so beautiful is when people actually record it instead of just taking like, you know, an acoustic electric guitar, plugging that straight into, you know, an amp and actually recording the amp or just straight to the box and doing it that way. They actually place the mic in front of the guitar so that they can actually record the live strings and the hand moving and doing all that stuff. And I feel like that's what they did in this recording. And I love the sound of the hand moving across the strings, that little like sound. Mm. Mm. If you ever listen to the instrumental version of Positions by Ariana Grande, I know, I know, but she has an acoustic guitar doing that little ba -na -na -na, da -da -na -na -na, and it's divine go and listen to it it's really good it's like it's just it changes the whole vibe of the song and frankly it's got the hand the hand movie thing and i really like it we had some tears but now we're going to continue that suddenly so it must go right into a different song then that's what I'm assuming because it ends super super suddenly so it has to go through straight into what is it the lodge that would make sense I am the wooden doors, the lodge. Usually lodge is associated with like wood cabin. Look at me dissecting things. Let me know if that goes like right into it. Cause it was super, super sudden. Okay. Okay. You know, we're here for it. We're here for it. I definitely liked I am the wooden doors a little bit more than I liked you were but a ghost. Um, just because I, it, I heard more elements. It had a little bit more changes to it. And that, oh, that acoustic instrumental. Oh, I just, I can't. I'm just overwhelmed. Wow, this one doesn't have as many hits as, uh, the last two. So this is considered doom metal, black metal. I wonder where they recorded this does it say on here i wonder if they did it in i wonder if they did it in portland or not It'd be interesting to look up so this is not reviewed in I Am the Wooden Doors, the vocalist John Holm calls himself the Wooden Doors as if to say he chases a simpler, more nature-oriented lifestyle. 
He has understood the world is broken, probably for some problem happened, and it could refer to the death of his beloved or in a more pantheistic view to human society which doesn't respect nature and ruins it. So he closes himself off from the society in which he felt oppressed and goes into nature where he becomes protector and lover of nature. If the song is taken metaphorically, it assumes another nuance of meaning. Even when your humanity is fading away, there's a place deep inside you that will protect your wills, your integrity, and help you make it through every difficult moment. Do we have another tragedy here? So, so what, what happened with this lover? This is the second time that somebody's mentioned it. So, I'm very curious to know, did he like lose his girlfriend or something like that? God, some of these artists, man, they have such tragic, sad stories. Most of them involving like their kids and it's like breaks my heart okay breaks my heart when all is withered and torn and all is perished and fallen these great wooden doors shall remain closed when the heart is a grave filled with blood and the soul is a cold and haunted shall of lost hope haunted shawl of last lost hope oh my god that's a tongue twister when the voice of pride has been silenced and dignity's fire is this woman i don't when the voice of pride has been silenced and dignity's fires are but cinders their grandeur shall remain untainted i wish to die with my will and spirit intact the will that inspired me to write these words seek not the fallen unlock these wooden doors um ah i skipped an album uh, by accident okay so we're going uh, we're going back into the past okay i'm sorry i didn't even see the bottom i thought this was an order uh, oh okay so we're going to 1999 so <laughs> we're going like two years, three years prior to The Mantle, uh, to Pale Folklore, their record, and it's going to be Hallways of Enchanted Ebony. This is actually going to be quite interesting uh, because we're going to get to hear um, what their like sound was before this. Also, the reverb on his vocals is like perfection. Oh. And the singer has such a great voice. And they, they've got the whisper elements in this, which I really like. I love his like 
metal voice and then his cleans. It's like, again, it's like Wonder Wall meets metal. Brother, okay? Let's continue. track we listened to where it's a little monotonous but in the difference with this one is there's a lot more catchier riffs and melodies that they're doing in this that I really like um, and I enjoyed all of these songs I could definitely hear myself listening to this this I could see myself vibing on a rainy day in my car just like painting the mood painting the vibe um, don't really hear anything different between, like, this and their 20, their 2002 record, which I wouldn't expect too much of a sound change or production change within that three-year time. Um, and if anything, I feel like they added more... They experimented more with the mantle, with like panning and creating more of like a user experience, if that makes sense. Whereas this one, it's like, I haven't really experienced anything that was like that yet. <laughs> and they've kept it pretty like straightforward in terms of like the instruments too. <laughs>
uh, the symbol taps. The symbol taps. He's like flirting with them. Yeah. 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 I'm, uh, I'm just a little overwhelmed. <laughs> I'm a little overwhelmed. There's, uh, there's not too much that's, like, keeping me with this section so far. But again, good song for a rainy day. Good song for a rainy day. Let's continue. with the dogs it was a very interesting ending because it like the song ended stopped and then kind of like had the the wind 
the dogs came in made me think of like the thing <laughs> hallways of enchanted ebony so this is like what they're Is this the first record? I'm assuming it's either the first or second. Or something like that. With Hallways of Enchanted Ebony, it starts the second half of the album. Oh! That probably explains the transition midway of the song. It was written by guitarist Don Anderson and vocalist John Holm, and it begins to tell of the second part of the myth of Phaethon? 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 The protagonist, Phaethon, is being reached by death. Meanwhile, her sisters, the Heliades, <laughs> approach the river in which their brother fell and mourn this tragedy. Zeus had to intervene with a pitiful gesture in his way. He transformed their tears into amber, which fell into the waters of the Po and formed some islands while the sisters were turned into tremulous poplars. An excellent green decor for those flat islands. In this track, it is talked about the mooring of Pathan's sisters. Be turned into a tree. Green decor. Kiss me coldly and drain this life from my lips. Let the cold blood flow on its own. Kiss me coldly and fall away from the soul long forgotten. From which of this oak shall I hang myself? These ebon halls are always dark. From which frostbitten bow shall I die? Not approved, but it says a reference to Agalock's 1997 debut EP from Witch of This Oak. Okay, so yeah, it is like their their first full-length record, I would assume. Second album, their second release. Um, okay. As dark as the winter, as black as her ghastly veil, as cold as her whisper, and chilling to change my SD card. I'm definitely getting the folk metal aspect and the atmospheric black metal for sure. Post metal, that's new. What is post metal? Dead Winter Days. And what do you think about this like full length album that they have, Pale Folklore? I'd be interested to know. So we have one more song left. We are going all the way to 2006. So this is four years after the 2002 record, The Mantle. And we are going to um, Ashes Against the Grain record and the song Fallen Snow. How is it being used in another location? Starting off somewhere clean. Now. Mastodon vibes this record especially the drum sound and I think that's something too that like I didn't hear as much maybe it's because we listened to so many songs off the mantle which just really encompassed that like folk 
metal sound. I don't know what they, those boys, those boys achieved something on the mantle. It was just beautiful. And I feel like what we heard um, with Hallways of Enchanted Ebony was definitely more like straightforward. Um, not too much like experimentation, like I said, with the headphones and stuff. And this has kind of given me the same vibes, although we're not even a minute in really yet. But that's what I'm feeling. too before getting into this section just like the quickest little pause to like transition you sometimes those things can be really hard to like actually nail you wouldn't think it would be but it can be tough too it can definitely be tough trip music it's absolute road trip music like if you were driving through the Rockies or like Wyoming or something and you had like gray clouds and you saw a storm of brewing and you were listening to this like that's what I feel like this is it's just it's relaxing to me it's something I can just like chill and vibe with which is really cool and it's interesting to find that in comparison to a lot of the bands that we've had on this channel which you know, are more like hype mode, like I'm going to the gym or I'm feeling like punching a Karen <laughs> vibes, you know, and this is just like chill, relaxing, just like very cool. One thing I really like about this song is, again, very catchy melodies, just like good cleans. The vocals are so good. <laughs>
the drums in this section because like I feel like in this section he's doing ba 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 and I feel like before we even got to the chorus I guess like you could say verse one he was doing a ba 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 you know type thing ba 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 and then I don't I don't think that section went right into like the pocket kind of opening up but I feel like this is more simplified and I don't know if they were doing this more simplified version the same way they were doing it in the first verse is that am I wrong about that did they change it I don't know it'd be kind of cool if they did and I really loved the way they opened up that that pocket I think they were doing a little bit of double bass and they just ugh, they just like released it and it just felt like you could breathe again it was very nice <laughs> such a nice layering piece and right before this you've got the main guitar just holding out these nice bold chords and again accents these little melodies that just accent it so you have the big solid chords and then this little melody of this little riff accent solid chord riff accent vocals open up whisper king of whispers man they got some good layers real good layers Fade away section it's such a it feels like a resolve almost and you just like they hold it out and kind of let the drums just fill a little bit of space hold the note drums fill the space and then they all kind of kick in into this nice little like 
bumpy groove, but I feel like live that it would just it would be such a nice resolve. And I, I want to hear this band live just for this. I just feel like it would just be just a, there for a sound experience. You're not there really to thrash. You're just there to like vibe and just exist. <laughs> <laughs> for them to kind of just like jam on it live or I feel like this would be a really good kind of show closer where they like tease like I could see them kind of jamming this out and then all the lights fade right as he's like doing that little ending thing or whatever and then they go into something heavier for the encore <laughs> all right falling snow I see how you are. Uh, falling snow. Like a lock. Burp, burp, burp. Ashes against the grain. This white mountain on which you will die. Oh, three part sort of song. Our fortress is burning, part one, part two, bloodbirds, part three, the grain. <gasps> you have to tell me what that's like. We could also do a separate reaction to that as like a full song. If you want, what is this? Fire above, ice below, none unlike the waves. Scars of the shattered sky, our fortress has burned to the ground. Interesting song titles. Not approved, but this one says Falling Snow is a second track off the album Ashes Against the Grain. Uh, resumes the theme treated in the previous song, Limbs. Here the snow is compared to crows. As the snow falls on a dead tree, it has no leaves, the crows fall on a dead body, which is lying on the ground to eat the remains of him. Reminds me of uh, the beginning of Game of Thrones, where they start beyond the wall and that dude like sees a white walker. Ugh, miss OG Game of Thrones. The water pours its embracing arms round the stone. Decay drips from the unquiet void where the ice forms, where life ends. The stone is, by the crimson blood, swallowed. The red tide beyond the ebon wound. C 
contorted. My sacrifice bids farewell in this river of memory, a wave to end all time. Oh, red birds escape from my wounds, return as falling snow to sweep the landscape. A wind, haunted wings without bodies. What is this? Likely a reference to the surrealist film, The Holy Mountain, which the members of Agalock have praised and called an influence numerous times. What do we think about that? What do we think about that? Metal Archives, Agalock. Let's see what they've got here. Oh, I'm upset that they split up. So they split up in 2016 and all of their remastered stuff is from 2016. Atmospheric folk doom, black metal, nature loss, depression, death, and winter. I was going to say, all of their songs are like very winter feeling, winter based, which isn't really surprising because if you spend a, if you've been to Portland, if you've lived in Portland or Oregon in general, it's a, it's like Seattle. It rains all the time there. It's just cloudy, like all the time. And it does snow there. The winters can be kind of brutal. The summers are pretty mild, but there you have a lot of like gloomy days there. So I feel like I'm definitely getting like Portland, Oregon vibes. <laughs> it's definitely giving me that like gloomy nature vibes if that makes sense the forests there the nature the nature in Oregon is so worth it the hikes out there just oh man yeah it's beautiful it's like Jurassic Park like forests out there um so is soft resinous so agalog also agalog Cha or Agalochum is uh, it's not Agaloch, is it? I, I'm assuming Agaloch sounds better. Is a soft resinous wood of highly ar aromatic smell and is used as incense and perfume in many Asian countries. Originally started as a studio project. John Holm parted ways with the rest of the band members in May of 2016. After a few days of uncertainty, an official statement was issued declaring Agalock to be permanently laid to rest. On May... Sorry, I lost my place. On May 18th, 2016, eventually in late June 2016, he declared during an interview for Billboard that he had never intended to reduce Agalock to his solo project and that he is completely fine with the split. John Hom moved into the black metal project Philorian, while Don, Jason, and Aesop formed, what is that, Kurata? Both projects ended in 2019, get wrecked. Oof. What did you think about Karata and Philorian? Compilation. So, Ashes Against the Grain was their full length, Marrow, and then they had this EP, Faustian Echoes, and then The Serpent and the Spear. So, I'm really curious to listen to The Serpent and the Spear, because um, we can listen to this, because we, we besties with Profound Loud, all right? We could listen to this if we wanted to. Um, oh, man. They have an actual three-minute song. Look at that. I thought y'all only did ten-minute encore songs. <laughs> so, where did you, like, record this? Hold on. Hold up. End records. Additional notes. Uh, released in vinyl in 2005 via Profound Loud. Uh, standard vinyl blue. Let's see. Recording information. Mixed in March. Anderson's girlfriend at the time performed the operatic singing. 
but there's no like information on where it was recorded. Just wanted to see if it was like in Portland or not. Uh, so then you have the mantle. This is confusing. Okay. All right. Well, let's just see if we can find anything on this. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, additional notes. Recorded in 05. Wave sample captured at Ruby Beach, Washington. Alright. So, I guess that's about it. <laughs> Alright, y'all. Woo! That's this is quite a video. If you're still watching, if you're still here, thank you. Um, I know this was a long one. Sometimes these, like, 10-minute songs can be quite wild. <laughs> um, what did we think about today's picks? What did we think about Agaloc? Um, do you like them? Are you more into something a little heavier? Uh, what's, what's your thoughts? What, what are your thoughts? Um, for me, this is what I think. Um, I really like the sound that Agaloc has. It gives me, like, Opeth vibes, but it's something that I feel almost like I can relate to a little bit more since they're from a city and a state that I lived in for so long. If that makes sense, I don't know. Um, that's just kind of what I feel. <laughs> um, I feel like I understand the music, but I just, I really like it. it it's something different that we haven't had on the channel that makes me feel something different. Like, it's, like, kind of inspirational, kind of, like, my emo sad girl vibes, you know. It's something I can listen to on a road trip or when I want to, like, work or just vibe or just, like, rest. Like, I could sleep to it and relax to it. Um, not that it's boring, so boring it's putting me to sleep. That's not what I'm saying. Um... It's just beautiful. I definitely think my favorite, favorite track is the first one we listened to. And the Shadow of Our Pale Companion is just, like, seriously, beautiful composition. Very emotional, very beautiful composition. Um, and then I think I Am the Wooden Doors was the other one that had sort of this, like, instrumental break with the uh, acoustic guitar that was really nice. Um... As far as the other two songs, I feel like my least favorite is probably Hallways of Enchanted Ebony, just because I feel like it was a little bit more monotonous. Same with, like, You Were But a Ghost in My Arms. I feel like both of those just dragged a little bit upon my first impressions. However, again, road trip music, like it's something you can vibe to. So I think I just need to like sit down with it and just listen to it and get used to like the melodies and stuff. Um, because those like slow burn songs, it's the same thing with Opeth. You just like put it on and just vibe, you know? Um, and then I think Fallen Snow is also a really strong song too. Um, there's a big difference. I mean, we did listen to three songs off of the mantle, so it's kind of un an unfair advantage for their other two records, but at least with the mantle, they did something really special. There's something different with that record that I noticed versus like Ashes Against the Grain and Pale Folklore. Um, and I mentioned it before, but they just, it seems like they either switched producers or had some new person like mixing and mastering a new audio engineer or somebody that was like really giving them inspiration and, and they were really in tune with the music when they were recording this because the layering pieces they added, the vocal effects, the whispers, the different guitars, the two different acoustic guitars that they used, it's just like it's perfection, but it was like the quality of sound and like making it a user experience for somebody with headphones 
like it was overwhelming almost it because it was just so beautiful especially for in the shadow of our pale companion was an absolute emotional experience with the headphones on in terms of the panning in terms of where things were placed and everything so let me know your thoughts like do you agree with that i'm assuming that they they have more acoustic guitar or something in their other two records ashes against the grain and pale Fork folklore because again unfair advantage that we did three songs from the mantle but let me know your thoughts i feel like the mantle is, is probably their most strong record um i don't I'm, I'm curious about their 2014 record and their ep before they split let me know your thoughts um What's your favorite song, least favorite song? Have you seen them live? And do you miss them? Do you wish that they would get back together? Um, I wonder what they're doing now. So if their last project, oh, I didn't even realize that both of those projects ended in 2019 before the pandemic. So I wonder if they're even doing music or did they retire or are they thinking about getting back together? That'd be interesting to know. Um, anyway, that's going to be it for the video. Thank you so much for spending time with me. Thank you so much for watching. If you're still here, it really does mean a lot. I know that these videos are long and, uh, they are just a fun listening party. So I hope you enjoyed your popcorn, your snacks, your drinks. Um, and I hope you're also in something comfy and not in something uncomfy. <laughs> um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Y'all already know. Join our Discord, The Mosh Pit. There's an invite link in the description. And you can send stuff to the P.O. Box um, if you want something featured in the metal unboxing video. Stay tuned for so, so much more. This, the rest of the year, y'all, is going to be insane, okay? It's going to be so awesome. We're going to have so much fun stuff planned for the holidays, okay? So prepare thyself, okay? We got a lot of things moving behind the scenes. So just prepare yourself, okay? Stay safe. Thank you for watching. I love you very much. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your morning, afternoon, evening, night, wherever you are and wherever you're watching this. Please take care and I'll see you soon. Bye, you guys.